Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. I have heard the people and I am giving the people what they want. In December, I decided to do a deep dive into this palette. I featured a lot of tutorials using it and you guys were so intrigued by it. And I think so impressed as was I at how amazing these powders are that you guys really wanted to see a dedicated video where I give you step-by-step -step breakdown of the various ways that I use this. So that is exactly what we are doing today. Make sure that you subscribe and click the bell next to it. This way you get a notification every time I'm uploading a new video here on my channel. Guys, we have hit 1 thousand subscribers. I could not be more excited. I could not be more happy. I never really saw my channel reaching this many subscribers. I always say this every time I hit like a milestone subscriber count that I remember when it was like literally me <laughs> subscribed to myself and like four people in my family. And I'm really proud that we collectively have have kept this going. You know, not only have I mustered up the courage to somehow put my face, my voice, my entire being on the internet at least once a week, every week, um, but you guys have really pushed me and motivated me into believing in myself and have come up with you know content as to what it is you guys would like to see from me and helped me to really shape this channel into what it is. So I definitely do want to give you guys like a huge thank you. Just your motivational comments. I have, as anyone has, had hard times in life and I voiced some of them, my struggles with anxiety and such. I mean, you guys have always been there to really just like lend an ear. And I really do feel like when I film these videos in this room, sitting here staring at a camera by myself, like I really do feel like all 1000 plus of you are here with me. I'm excited to see what where we take this community in 2022. I have a lot of plans and I have a lot of content brainstormed in my head that I think you guys would really benefit from. And yeah, I'm just excited, you know, to see where we go from here because hopefully it can only be up. So thank you. And with that being said, let's go ahead and just hop right into the video. I have my palette, I have my brushes, and we are ready to go. I promise you we will hit every single shade in this palette. And I do want to say that just because I'm using this palette in these certain ways does not mean that you need to use the palette in these certain ways. It's makeup. It's not that serious. We're all supposed to be creative. That's just the beauty of makeup. You can do whatever you want with makeup. You can make it your own. But if you are someone that's just like looking at this palette, because this can look really intimidating. I'm not gonna lie. I would say I'm pretty experienced in the realm of makeup. Like the first time that I got this, I was kind of like, what, what the holy hell? What are we supposed to do with this? And so if you are sitting there and you're thinking the same exact thing, then you can use this video as a guideline and inspiration, I should say, um, to think of different ways that you can use it for yourself. This is beautiful for any and every skin tone, whether you're fair, medium, or dark. I think that you will find shades that work in here. I think every shade will pretty much work for you. Just if you are someone that has a different complexion than me, you might use different shades a little bit differently, but again, take this video as a guideline. These powders are extremely, extremely pigmented. If you're someone that's not super experienced, I would definitely use softer brushes with this palette. It's easier to be able to build up product than it is to slap it on and then have to blend and blend and blend in order to take away. So I'm using a synthetic brush to layer up the makeup. If you don't know the difference between a synthetic brush and a natural hair brush, honestly the difference is that one is natural, so natural hairs from like an animal, and the other one is synthetic, so it's fake. Synthetic is softer, whereas natural is a little bit more coarse. This is the Jaclyn Hill Morphe JH04. I like a synthetic brush. Again, you can use either JH05, and I don't know if you can see, but this just looks like scratchier. This is the most interesting shade in the palette. It's kind of like this brownish red tone. As you can see, pretty pigmented and I'm gonna start right here. Can you see? Can you see? Can you see that shadow that I just created? And then I'm gonna follow my jawline and I'm keeping it right under the jaw. In real life, this can look a little crazy if you don't blend it out and I don't only use this shade underneath my jaw, I'm gonna mix it with another shade to make it look more natural, but I'm just hugging this along the jawline and I kind of want my jawline to be more pronounced because I really don't have one. So one way that you can do that is I'm taking the angled brush and you see how there's like that L kind of, does that make any sense? I don't know. Um, but I'm gonna hug this shade right here and then bring it down like that. 
And you guys know, I was talking about how I'm kind of getting a little like something over here, gobble, gobble. It's like so subtle. It doesn't, it's, it's like nothing. I'm being dramatic because that's just, I am very dramatic sometimes, can be. So I'm gonna tilt my head back so you can kind of see. Now I'm pulling the shadow down. This way it looks like a shadow. I'm pulling the shade down, but that way it looks like a shadow. And can you just see the difference between this side now and this side? Like this is hanging a little bit more than this side because this is just like the most beautiful shade and like the most beautiful thing. This is literally the only way that I use hashtag shade. That's not to say that you can't use it in different ways. If you come up with a way that you use it or you've used it before, do let me know. However, this is how Scott Barnes himself said that he likes to use this shade. So that is how I use this shade. I definitely want to blend it out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little bit of chiseled. It's a warm brown. I would say, um, kind of like a soft brown, if that makes any sense. I'm gonna take it on the same brush, do the same exact thing. But this is gonna take a little bit of the redness away and it's also going to cut the jawline a little bit more. And again, I'm bringing it down the neck. And then if you're someone that really wants to get rid of your double chin, take a little bit more and just hug it right where that double chin is. You're getting all the angles today, boy. You're getting all the angles today. But just, again, look at that. Look at that, okay? Look at that. As opposed to this. Like, I'm sorry. Did my jaw lose three pounds? Because it kind of looks like my jaw lost three pounds in the matter of one second. For my face, I like to pick a more true contour shade personally, that is my preference. And when I say a true contour shade, I like something that's a little bit cooler toned. So Diced is my most used shade in this palette. Like I swear to God, I'm gonna hit pan because I use this practically every day. I'm definitely gonna hit pan in this shade. So I'm gonna take it on another synthetic brush, Complex Culture brush, Cheek Chiseler. Perfect, cheek chiseling. That's what we're doing all day. Hop into Diced. This is a clean brush and I'm kind of tapping off the excess. I don't really know what you want to call that. I'm gonna start in the back of my face first and we're just gonna do your traditional contouring. So I'm keeping this on an angle. And can you see? So I like to lay it down in the back because normally where you put product down first is gonna pack the most pigmentation. And I don't want splotchy blotchy or like too much pigmentation in the front of my face. I want the contour to just like naturally progress. Now, you can use these products on damp skin. Like, you know, say you were to go in with foundation and then you just started to chisel right away. It won't go on patchy. However, if for some reason you do find that the shades are a little bit patchy, I would take a transition and setting powder like this one that I always use. I would put it on a little powder puff, pick up some powder, press it into the puff, and then dab this over any of the areas where you are going to contour or bronze. That's just a trick of the trade. Honestly, if you're ever using a bronzer that just for some god awful reason doesn't know how to blend itself without looking like a patchy mess, then go ahead and do that translucent setting powder little trick. It's gonna take away any of the dampness in your skin. This way the dampness doesn't pick up any of the powder because that's honestly most of the time what leaves that patchy kind of finish. It's the dampness in your skin, the powder like getting stuck to it. So just a trick. I'm still using diced, dipping back and forth, and now I'm going to start to chisel out my face. So can you see that? Girl, ooh girl. Forehead a little bit more narrow and a little bit smaller. And now I'm gonna take a little bit more and I like to put some just like right here where my temple is. I don't know if you can see this, but this is like some voodoo shit. There's contour here and there's contour here and there's like a space of non-contour and that illusion kind of just lifts the whole face up. I'm gonna keep just working on the left side of my face, my left, but looking at me, it's the right to you. So you guys can just see like how transforming of a product this is, cause it's so good. So can you see? It looks really good, super natural. And then I'm gonna take a little bit more and I'm just gonna go over down here one more time just because I find like that gradient effect makes it look more natural. It kind of just ties everything in together. And like, honestly, this is enough contour for me, but I will keep going because I'm not gonna lie, some days it's not enough contour for me and I could just keep going. To deepen out that contour 
a bit. I'm gonna take the same brush and I'm going to hop into Snatched. This is pretty deep. The deepest shade in here is definitely Sculpt. And I do mix between the two. It doesn't really matter which one. However, I'm like super pale right now. I have absolutely no self tanner on me. I haven't self tanned in like over a month. So I'm gonna go ahead and use Snatched, dipping into Snatched, same brush. I'm gonna tap off the excess a little bit more aggressively in this one. Take the pointy side of the brush and point it towards my nose, literally just keeping this in the very back of my face. So I'm pushing it right here. Do you see where that dot is that I just laid down? And I'm keeping it right there and I'm pressing it into the skin. And then I'm taking what's ever left over and I'm kind of just going over what I just did, but just keeping this a little bit closer to the hairline to give it that like gradient natural. And I know it sounds crazy because we're just piling on the makeup here and I'm just like, pile on more, pile on more, gradient effect makes it look more natural, but it really does. Um, just, you know, trust me. So I'm gonna throw it down here. I kind of just like throw every color under here. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just really into the, uh, the deletion of my under chin, whatever you wanna call it. What's ever left over on the brush, I'm gonna stamp it a little bit closer. Again, to give that gradient effect. And can you just see, snatched. Another important thing to do is to get it in the hairline. You don't want to be able to see contour than like your skin on the hairline. It just takes away the naturalness of it. And can you just see like how sculpted the side of my face is? It's so, so good. Now I would like to bronze a little bit and I like to personally go in with my contour first and then my bronzer over it because I just find that like the bronzer over the contour kind of like blends it out. It makes it look a little bit more natural. I just like a softer, more like airbrushed effect. However, if you're someone that likes a more like chiseled look, I would recommend going in with contour last. So go in with bronzer and then contour over over the bronzer, but that's just not my vibe. So for bronzer today, I'm gonna take another complex brush. They make really good brushes, guys. I don't know how much they are because they sent them to me, but if you can get your hands on them and they're affordable, like girl, I would get them. This is the Press and Set Bronzer Brush and it's just like a flat, big ass brush. And I cleaned all of my makeup brushes this weekend. How lovely, love working with clean brushes, but also hate it because then I'm like, I just, what did I just clean all these for? For bronzer, frame, hit of sliced. So I'm just gonna take both of those on there, flick it in the air, press this over the sections of my face that I just contoured, but this is a bigger brush, so it's going to cover more ground. It's not gonna be as precise and it's gonna give me that like all over bronze rather than like a precise contour, if that makes sense. So again, taking those two shades, and I'm just going to kind of just like go over everything really gently. And then what's ever left, I'm gonna use that to bring it down the neck. Or can you see that gave a little bit of warmth, like the slightest bit of warmth, but it just pulls everything. Like look at this side. I mean, this side is not bad, you know? Like I said, I would totally go out not contoured. Like that's a look. And I feel like in 2022, we welcome that. If you missed my 2022 makeup forecast video, give it a look because that was a damn good video and it will make sense as to what I'm referring to. But like this side is just so beautiful. I mean, this side is not not beautiful, but you know, like definitely sculpted. I love it. I'm not touching my nose yet because I am gonna go ahead and contour my nose, which we all gotta take a deep breath for that. I have been really struggling with my brows. I was on like a really, really good streak and I love you guys and you know I love you, but like some people leave mean comments, okay? One day someone just was like, what happened to your brows? They look atrocious and I don't know what it is. Ever since that day, it was like maybe almost two weeks ago, every time I sit down to do my brows, they come out like trash. But today I have to say they came out pretty damn effing good, so take that. Take that, haters. So what I did was I used Diced on an angled brush and I literally just used that to shape my brows, press in this powder and fill them in. And my brows have not looked this good in a good like two weeks. So I love how they came out. Great shade for me. Another shade that could work for brows, I don't use it, but definitely Snatched. This kind of has like a khaki green undertone to it, which it kind of works in brows, just not in mine. Um, I have a very neutral undertone to my skin, so it shows up pretty green. But if you're someone 
one that has an olive undertone or you're warmer or a little bit deeper than me, I think this would look beautiful in your brows as well. But again, I use the shade Diced. I used Sliced and Chiseled for my lips. I'll take an angled brush. I used a Scott Barnes brush. Go in and I will literally just line my lips with this brush. I'll take the shade Sliced, go in with that shade first, line them just because Sliced is a little bit lighter than Chiseled. What I do is I like to go in with the lighter shade and then a darker shade because you guessed it, gradients just makes everything look more natural. You can use this over top of liquid products, underneath liquid products. So today I didn't put any um, liquid over my lip contour, but sometimes I do contour underneath. I will literally do the exact same thing that I did today, but then I'll go ahead and take, just pretend this is a foundation brush. I'll just take just what's ever left over from when I went in with my foundation originally, and I will just pat over my lips to go ahead and soften the lip contour. Probably my least used shade in this palette is Carve, but I do really like this as a crease shade. I did use this in my eyes today. I used the Laura Mercier Caviar Sticks, and then I just wanted a little bit of a transition shade in my crease. I'm gonna use this eyeshadow brush. This is a Luxie 209 Large Shader. And what I do is, everyone's nose is different, I did a video on how I contour my nose. If you want like more in depth, I'm kind of gonna not be so in depth today, but I have a bump on the side of my nose. So what I do is I take some contour and I put that over top of my bump, literally. I love this contour because it looks so natural, so soft. Using Dice, that's the only shade that I use to contour my nose. And I'm just putting that over top of my bump. And it looks a little crazy at first, but we're gonna get there. Contouring 101 is that contour brings things back. So if I have a bump that's forward and I wanna bring it back, I put a shadow on top of it to bring it back. If I had a nose that was like inverted and I wanted more of a bridge, I would take a highlighter because highlighter does the opposite of contour and brings things forward. It catches the light and brings it into the light. So your nose might not look like mine, but just knowing the kind of principles of contouring and highlighting, you might be able to just shape your nose when you just sit down and think about it, you know? Sit down and think about it before you get into it. To draw a line down the side of my nose. Can you see that line? Does it look crazy? Probably. This side's a little harder because my nose actually leans this way, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and just give it a shot. And you know, I don't know, it really doesn't need to be perfect. And when I sit down and like take the time to contour my nose, like I always feel so much better about myself, but I'm just honestly lazy most of the time and I don't feel like contouring. So I'm just gonna speed it up. I'm gonna take this brush and I'm just gonna take what's ever left over and I'm pushing what's ever left on here in towards the nose. Okay, well now I am just like all twisted and I feel like I'm in it. So let me just do it like I would normally do it. This is like a impromptu lesson. I'm taking some powder. This kind of like softens everything to be honest and helps to blend everything out together. And if you mess up, you're erasing it with powder, which I think is great. I'm gonna leave that on there for a moment. I'm gonna go ahead and finish off the other side of my face and then we'll meet back here. These powders are beautiful anywhere and everywhere. You could totally use them as eyeshadows. I use them as eyeshadows all the time. Probably should have done that today, but I was like really craving a Laura Mercier caviar stick kind of smoky eye look. So if you would like to see this used as eyeshadows, I have used it before. Be sure to follow along on my TikTok, my Instagram, all of my socials will be listed down below. Just check out my profile. I'm sure you will find multiple videos in which I did use Scott Barnes sculpting and contouring as eyeshadow. So if you enjoyed this video, leave it a thumbs up down below. Let me know in the comments, do you own this palette? After watching this video, will you buy it? Was this video helpful? Anything that you guys wanna talk about, do be sure to leave it down below. I would love to hear from you. Make sure that you subscribe and click the bell if you have not done so yet. I had a wonderful time as always. Thank you guys so much for joining me and I will see you in my next one. Bye guys. Mwah.